CSU Extension Rangeline Curriculum. SARE Grant Number LNC 19-419. Come spend a day with us in the life of a farmer or rancher through the good days and the bad. Today we're going to learn about the different types of rangelands that you'll find across the Dakotas. The first rangeland that you'll find commonly across the Dakotas, possibly the most common range type, is the prairie grasslands. Rolling prairie hills cover much of South Dakota along with North Dakota. There you'll find different types of prairies, including the short grass and the tall grass prairie. And then a mix of the two called the mixed grass prairie. The mixed grass prairie, like shown here, is composed of short and tall grasses. As you head further west across South Dakota, you'll find shorter grass prairies or mixed grass prairie that's made up of our short grasses, including prairie june grass, blue grama, buffalo grass, and sedge type of species. These are common plants that are found in the mixed and short grass prairie. Other common plants that you'll find across the mixed grass prairie include western wheat grass, little blue stem, the needle grasses, along with a diverse number of other types of plants. The tall grass prairie is dominated by tall grasses, including big blue stem, switchgrass, Indian grass, and little blue stem, along with other tall plants, such as the cattails shown here. Although farming is common across all parts of South Dakota, Areas like this that are too rocky for farming make perfect environments for livestock grazing. Short and tall grass prairie are both ideal for grazing livestock. Across the prairies you will find grazing livestock including cattle, sheep, and even buffalo. The prairie is also home to numerous types of wildlife including deer, pheasant, and even some elk and moose will be found. The Badlands are home to a diverse plant ecosystem, including many native grasses such as blue grama, face and reed, along with many native forbs and brush and woody species. This allows for a multitude of wildlife to call the Badlands their home. I guess I'd like to point out uh, the difference between ranching in the Badlands and the rolling prairie out on what we call out on top. It's there's more production out in those pastures out on the top than the rolling prairies, but, but our stocking rate is based on uh, soil types. There's a lot of Gumbo buttes and areas that don't produce any grass, cattle can't utilize them, and so that all figures into the stocking rate at which these pastures are set. A lot of sagebrush here and there scattered around. We can, I myself consider sagebrush a source of moisture for for grasses. Um, it's also the home for a lot of burrowing mice and all those kind of creatures, but those Rocky Mountain junipers that you see ahead of us, uh, they also furnish protection for elk and deer and even cattle. So there's got to be some balance. Here's an example of probably the most desired, one of the more desired grasses in the grassland. It's western wheatgrass. It's a cool season grass that produces a lot of pollen spray too. Another type of rangelands in South Dakota is the Black Hills. 
Although the Black Hills are mainly a forested region, mainly composed of pine and spruce and other types of trees, they make a great grazing livestock area. This is because a lot of the forested understory is actually grass that cows will graze on. There's also a lot of shrubs that provide forage for sheep and other types of livestock. The Black Hills is also plentiful with wildlife species as they enjoy the browse as well. The Black Hills have an abundance of different types of vegetation available, including forbs, such as the milkweed, a whole bunch of grass species, bushes, shrubs, and many different species of trees. The grassy meadows in the Black Hills make a great spot for livestock grazing as well. Many people will put small corrals or pastures throughout the grassy meadows so livestock can feed on the grass that's available. There is also an abundance of natural water sources such as springs and creeks throughout the Black Hills. These make for excellent water sources for both livestock and wildlife. 